What is going on, Washington fans? Welcome to Bleach Report, and I am Josh Taylor, and I'm back to talk about free agency. So Washington has a lot of money to spend, and as we all know, um, we've had a lot of good hirings this offseason. You know, some people don't agree with all of them, but nonetheless, it seems like Washington's really shaping up a really good coaching staff to put together a good roster on top of having Adam Peters here to do that talent evaluation um, throughout the whole draft process and find those gems in the later rounds and then more than likely get our quarterback in the second pick. But then also spend that money in the, in the free agency period to set us up for the NFL draft. So obviously, the free agency period this year is a huge deal for Washington. I think this is where you're going to get really those impact players, those guys that can make an immediate difference. You know, you're not just drafting some prospect that you don't know what you're getting yet and, you know, has this, um, you know, kind of this little bit of a little – not every prospect comes in ready to go right away. So there's a little bit of a learning curve. But with these free agents, you can get some veterans that can, like I said, make immediate impacts on the field in a lot of positions. So this isn't all of the targets that I think Washington will take a look at. But really, I just picked five that I wanted to focus on. And I'll be doing a more deeper dive into all of these guys and just uh, individual videos on my YouTube channel. So check that out, JTFB. And I'll be back talk about some draft stuff here as well. But I think it's important to start here in celebrating the fact that Washington, in fact, has the most salary cap heading into free agency out of any team in the NFL. They are sitting at seventy three point six four nine million, which is, like I said, number one according to over the cap. So this is a big deal. You do have a lot of money to spend. Now, does that mean we're just going to throw you know blank checks at random people? No, I think there's a way to really go about it. Um, obviously you take a look at the draft, you see, you know, certain positions, how you feel, you know, you, you know, you, you're grading them. You have first round grades, second round grades. Do you see some guys you can see in the later rounds that you might be able to get, or do you want to fill in some of those holes in free agency? So I think this is important. Um, like I said, I have five guys picked out and, um, and PFF has a really good free agency tool that I'm going to be using today that shows you like their rankings, projected contracts and stuff like that. Just kind of like an overall view um, before free agency starts. We're right at a month away from free agency, which is crazy. This, the, the season literally just ended. For Washington, it's been over for a while, but the Super Bowl literally just happened. So it's going to go by fast, guys. So we have about a month of content of free agency just really getting y'all ready um, for what to look for. So let's go ahead and pull up the screen here and take a look at some guys. Um, but I want to go with my number one guy. This is the highest ranked um, on PFF. And like I said, there's some guys um, you'll see like Josh Allen, you'll see Brian Burns. These are guys that are projected to get franchise tags. So I didn't put them on my list. I think, you know, from everything that I've seen and just expectations league wide, guys like that are projected to get tagged. So really what I did is put some guys on here that are actual realistic free agency, you know, I'll call them water testers. These are guys who are going to, you know, feel things out in free agency and, they can go back to their teams or the teams are kind of like, Hey man, go test free agency. We don't really need you. Like these are guys that might not have a role in the current teams, but could be a big asset to another team somewhere else. So the first guy I have up, obviously you got to throw in the Jerry Sneed, the best corner in the league this year, in my opinion, um, got it, you know, Super Bowl ring once again with the Kansas city chiefs. I don't see them stopping <laughs> anytime soon, honestly, I think the Chiefs would love to get Legereus Sneed back, but I think that there is still a chance that he could go elsewhere because you see guys like Trent McDuffie who balled out for the Chiefs. Like It wouldn't be the end of the world if they lose him, but at the same time, he made a lot of big plays this season. Like I said, he was the more reliable corner in the league. He did not give up a single touchdown in the NFL until they played the Bills um, in the playoffs. Who was it that had that crazy catch? Um, I think it was Shakir. Had that crazy touchdown catch when he came back and barely, I don't know how he called it. Um, still really good coverage by Snee, but that was the only touchdown that he allowed um, the entire season. So Legereus Snee's a beast. And you want to talk about what Washington has, and I'm not going to go into re-signing, guys, but here's a PFF page. Um, obviously, with Kendall Fuller, you would like to get him back. You would like to re-sign him because, once again, if you don't, you got to get a guy like Snee. Or you're gonna have to draft a guy really high, like in that second round. And I'm not too, you know, fond of drafting a corner in the second round because I think we have some other needs. I think you need to spend the money in free agency, mostly on defense, but more importantly, on these big, like I said, these big playmaker impact positions like corner. So I think with Jerry Sneed, 
is a big one. So like I said, they have these guys ranked. Kirk Cousins, number two. Josh Allen, like I said, projected to get franchise tagged. Same with Brian Burns. Jalen Johnson, another guy who's probably going to get franchise tagged. Legereus Steve, they have him as the number 10 overall free agent with a projection of a three-year um Total of $52.5 million, $35 million guaranteed, averaging about $17.5 mil per year. I'm doing that all day. Like, uh, if, it, if it has to go up to, like, 18, maybe even 19, he's 27 years old. He's playing his best right now. Um, this is a guy that you definitely want, even if – this is the tricky thing. Even if Washington re-signs Kendall Fuller, would you go after a legerious need? It'd be really hard not to. And I know you have Forbes. Maybe you kick him inside. I don't know. But at the same time, I just I find it really hard. I think the new coaching staff will like Forbes. I, I really do. I think he does need some work. At the same time, you can't go back with that same trio and expect different results right away, even with the coaching staff, with Kendall Fuller, St. Juiced, and Forbes. So could you have a Fuller and a Sneed and then you have Forbes, you know, either rotating in or you have certain packages where you could have three corners on, on the field. I think there's a chance. Um, the Kendall Fuller contract, I forgot what they projected him to be at. Three-year, 13.3 mil uh, per year. So nothing crazy. Once again, he's been super reliable. I don't know why, but fans don't like Kendall Fuller for some reason. He's been the most reliable corner we've had like consistently. He was the number seventh graded overall corner in the entire league this year. Uh, and he was 15th last year. I don't see the hate for Kendall Fuller. He's still, um, he's almost 29, not bad. But if you do lose Kendall Fuller, and you're like, hey, you know, instead of paying him the 13.3 million per year, let's just go get Legarius Sneed, an extra, you know, four million a year or whatever. That's fine. I, at the same time, I just think a, a guy like him under Quinn and Wit um, as DC would just be a home run. Uh, signing and free agency. Like we we've seen how good he was all season long. You need that corner that can make plays right away. And I think, like I said, Kendall Fuller is much better than people expect for a guy who's just out there with no coaching. Kendall Fuller has been great. <laughs> He's been great. Uh, like I said, he didn't have any coaching help the last few years. Um, so I think Snead's a big option. Does he actually leave Kansas City? People think there's a chance. You know, you've already won the rings. Go get the money. Like I said, you're you're at that point. You're 27 years old. Sign a three-year contract. You'll be 30 after that. Then that's when you start really hitting like your vet deals, whatever, just collecting money and trying to get another ring. But you've already won. Like you're not ring chasing right now. Like you've already won. Yeah, of course you'd like to win another one. But would the Chiefs really be willing? Are they are they going to be able to afford a 17 and a half? It depends on what they got going on with uh, Chris Jones. Like they, they've got some people that got to pay. So I think Legarius needs definitely one to watch um, that I'm keeping my eye on. Um, so after that, we're staying on the defense. We're going to another impact position that Washington really needs some help with, and that's Bryce Huff. I love Bryce Huff. Straight out of Mobile, Alabama. Uh, I really like Bryce Huff. He's the number 18th PFF ranked free agent this offseason. The thing I like about Bryce is just how relentless he is getting to the quarterback. Just a high motor guy. I love watching film on some edge rushers, and it's just 100% effort every single play. Now, there's a few little, I don't want to really call them negatives, but just concerns with Bryce Huff. One, it's containing the run. He's not the best at it, but he makes up for it with his pass rushing ability. But at the same time, I still want him to stop the run on the way to the quarterback. That's what they always say. Stop the run on the way to the quarterback. Um, but he also was kind of a rotational guy. Like he wasn't playing every single snap. So there are some concerns there. But I think the upside of this guy is absolutely there. Production through the roof for the, like I said, for the rotation that he had. And it's like the, the price, and I'm going to pull it up. The price really helps you out because you do have a guy like KJ Henry, who I like too. I think you could see different packages, whether they're rotating. And people are going to say, if you're going to pay guys, no point if he's not playing all three downs, fresh legs, fresh motor, you know, rotational packages where you have these edge rushers and stuff like that, especially like on third down, get a Bryce Huff out there, but you know, some plays it could be, and Washington has a lot of free agents, by the way, on the, on the uh, edge. Like the, we got to sign, we got to, we got to get some, some bodies on the D line again. The interior is fine. 
outside needs help, obviously. And it's not just starters, it's also depth. Like Casey Tuhill, James Smith Williams, I think he's a free agent as well. Um, I think Obata is a free agent again. Uh, like I said, we got KJ Henry. I like Andre Jones, what we're getting out of him. Those are guys you can rotate it. You can rotate KJ Henry, you can rotate Andre Jones, but getting a guy like Bryce Huff should be at the top. Like I said, you're not gonna see, and I'm gonna show you all some names again. You're not gonna see Brian Burns, you're not gonna see um Josh Allen. Like I said, those two guys. They're getting franchise tags, if not paid, but they're definitely getting franchise tag. Daniil Hunter is another guy to watch. Three-year, 21.67 a year. That sounds like a lot for a guy that is uh, almost 30. Production through the roof for Daniil Hunter, though. But I'm not going to stay on that. I'm going to stay on Bryce Huff. Projected 16.67 mil a year for an edge rusher. Not bad. I'm taking that. Um, Like I said, um, they have a little description down here. It says Seth uh, Huff set out to prove that he's an absurd pass rushing efficiency in 2022 wasn't an obliteration, and he did just that in 2023 with the crazy high pass rush rate once again. Um, so they go on to say, like, once again, he doesn't play every single snap, and he's not the best at stopping the run all the time. But, like I said, his motor is always there. He's get, like he's playing really good ball right now. He's only 25, almost 26. Um and like I said, it's going to be really hard to find those guys, those big name guys. If it's not Daniel Hunter, Bryce Huff is next up when you talk about edge rushers. And then after that, there's really not too much. You're back at the Chase Youngs. You're back at some of these older guys. Um, I think Clowney's on here as well somewhere. Jonathan uh, Grenard. Um, but I think Bryce Huff's going to be at the top for a lot of people. So the thing is, like, what, do you have a plan in place for this guy? And I really think that Dan Quinn would. Um, like I said, once again, he wasn't some three down guy who was just out there every single play. Um, but still, I like him. Like I say, super young, still 6'3, 255. Um, the, the, the contract is not absurd by any means, it's very friendly compared to some of these other guys. Like I said, Brian Burns and all of them are going to be getting a hefty bag. Um, if not a franchise tag that comes at a pretty big cost anyways, but 20, 22, 23 million dollars a year. So they're getting it at a discount. Um, and this still allows you to get a guy in the draft that could go to the other side of the line, but it just it, it gives you a plan of getting to the quarterback. You know, Dan Quinn is really good at blitzes, he's really good at getting pressure. You know, he had Micah Parsons. Um, he had Lawrence, like he he figured things out. He he moved Marquise Bell to linebacker, you know send some pressures with him as well. But I think just having a plan in place to get to the quarterback this big, I think Bryce Huff could be a, a really good addition to his team. Like I said, it's going to be really hard to get some of these big name guys. You got, uh, I think AJ Epineza is in there as well. Um, but still you got to get some bodies. Bryce Huff's not that much. Like I said, you have what? $73 million, 16 and a half going to uh, a big production guy. Sign me up all day long. Next guy I have is a, a name that Washington fans will know. We used to hate this guy, but he could be uh, a really good piece for us now. That's Dalton Schultz, tight end for the Texans. You're like, okay, didn't really think about this one. I know. That's why I put him on you. Um, the draft, in my opinion, has about three tight ends that I think could be key guys right away. Obviously, Brock Bowers, but he's not going to be there. He's going to be like, top 10 pick um but then after that you can debate whether it's you know jt sanders everyone knows i'm a big ben senate fan out of kansas state um jaheim bell just doesn't do it for me there's just there's not a lot of tight ends in this draft that i like not a lot of day one guys so maybe they do get a, a, a ben senate in like the fourth round or something like that that's fine um, but outside of that, I think they just, they're missing that, that home run guy that can be a great weapon to our new rookie quarterback. Yes. A quarterback at two. We're not rolling with Sam guys. I hate to tell you, we're not trading back whoever we take at two. look at what Dalton Schultz did with the Texans last year and how big of a weapon he was for CJ Stroud in that offense. Dalton Schultz was Mr. Reliable. There was a lot of games where, you know, C.J. Stroud was able to depend on Dalton Schultz and find those big plays, third downs, you know, those those crossing routes across the middle. He was going deep a couple times too, 
just really helping balance that passing attack under Bobby Slowick. Like Dalton Schultz was so good this year. I don't think enough people talk about how good he actually was. Um, so I just I go back. I know he was a cowboy before. Um, he went to the Texans. He you know tested free agency and he's a free agent now again this year. I thought this guy was like super old. He's not. Dalton Schultz really isn't that old. Um, let me get to his page real quick. Um, but like, like I said, it's just super important. They have him at three years, eleven million a year. Like I would definitely do that. Definitely do that. Thirty three total. He's only twenty seven and a half. That's it. That's really good. Like sign me up for that. Like I'm saying, guys, um, he's a good enough blocker to get things done. And and the the passing game, he's a legit weapon for CJ Stroud this past season. The contract is there. Let's 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 check out what he did this season. I think I don't think he was hurt this year. I think he might have been banged up a little bit, but I don't think he was, you know, too crazy. He had 59 catches, tied for 12th in the league, 84 targets. Um, they did start deploying some Brevin Jordan as well, like second half of the season, I want to say as well. But still, 635 receiving yards, five touchdowns. Like, bro, sign me up. Average 10.8 yards per reception. He's averaging a first down to catch. I don't think, like I said, I just I don't think people are realizing how good Dalton Schultz was. Only four drops the whole season. That's got to be like top five. That's got that. That's less than Kelsey. Kelsey had more than four drops. That's for sure. And there was games where he had almost four drops in one game. Four drops. He had more touchdowns than he had drops. Come on, man. I would love to see Dalton Schultz. Like I said, it's just really hard to find that guy in the draft that can be an impact guy. Logan Thomas is not going to be here. Cole Turner, I just don't know what to think of him. He was a healthy scratch most of the season. And I know that was EB. Things are different. Cliff Kingsbury is going to have more for him. And I think so. Um, you know, Cliff Kingsbury is going to more deploy him as that Y guy, you know, like he's a natural at just, you know, catching the ball and not being some inline tight end. Like just put him out there to catch. You're gonna see a lot of three wide receiver sets. You're gonna see, you're gonna see a lot of four or five wide receiver sets with Cliff Kingsbury. You could deploy him as a wide receiver, like technically, in some of these um, formations that Cliff Kingsbury is gonna do. He's, I think he's gonna like that. But then, like John Bates, is that really what you're like banking on as tight end one next year? It can't be. It absolutely cannot be. Um, I think you have to get a tight end, and I think having a guy like Dalton Schultz once again. 6'5", 244, reliable guy. Jaden Daniels, Drake May, Caleb Williams, whoever it is, they're going to need a guy like this to where it's like, okay, I'm still learning the offense. I'm still transitioning. I need a little bit of help here. I need some of those easy throws to make, those rhythm throws, you know, just getting to the feeling of the game kind of throws. And a guy like Dalton Schultz really helps bring that to an offense. So I know he used to play for the Cowboys. I don't care. Give me Dalton Schultz all day long. Uh, let's see who's next. This one, I really like this guy. He got injured, what was it, like December? Uh, but he was the best at his position in the entire NFL at the time. That's Connor Williams, center for the Miami Dolphins. The interior line, as it is right now, for Washington is the worst in the entire NFL. Left guard and center-wise. Right guard, Sam Cosme finished as like a top six guard, not just right guard, overall guard in the NFL. He's like six or seven. Really good. Sam Cosme is a, a guy, a foundational piece you can build around that offensive line. Now we've got to fix the rest. The tackle spots, yes, they're bad, but they're more middle of the pack bad. Left guard and center last year were the worst. Chris Paul, Stromberg was hurt. We didn't really see much of him. Larson. Gates, like that, that can't happen again. Sadiq Charles, I can't bank on him being the, f- the future guy. I think he's a good depth guy, but you cannot bank on these guys being a starter. I think Connor Williams, once again, should be one of these guys that's really high up on the list. So you're saying, okay, but what does that look like? What does a Connor Williams coming here look like? Let me get out of Dalton Schultz real quick. Um, I think, what was he? I think he's on the next page. He's not that far down. Um, but he was ranked the number one center in the NFL when he got hurt 
Like he was playing so good. I was so bummed. The Dolphins had a lot of injuries last year too. Like I'm not surprised the season ended the way it did because it was bad. Um, dude, they're pro- they're projecting a one year six million, like easily. I think Miami would th- throw that at him in a heartbeat. He's only 26 years old. He finished the season as a second ranked center last year. He was the fourth. Um, I mean. Geez, why is it so low? Six mil? And I know. What he tears ACL? Yeah. Yeah, Williams unfortunately suffered a torn ACL in week 14, which will negatively impact his free agency market, um, which coincides with the beginning of free agency is really when his recovery process is. I think he'd be ready by the season. But still, if it's only $6 million, like I said, he's still super young, 26, almost 27. I'll just call him 27. Um, the thing that I like about Connor Williams and they kind of talk about it below here too, just how they, they do things in Miami, that offense, you know, with their zone blocking schemes and how they really want you to be a mobile guy. You see that he played left guard with the Cowboys too. So he has that, you know, flexibility to play both spots with Cliff Kingsbury's offense. You need linemen that are fast, that can move in space, whether it's screens or, or any kind of like he's pulling, like I said, like zone zone runs to one side and you're pulling that right guard and right tackle to the left side. You need guys that can move. I'm not going to say anything about Leno and Wiley because I don't have any tackles on my list right now. Um, like I said, there's some guys I might uh, take a look at in some other videos, but for Connor Williams, you have a guy that can move in space, whether it's straight ahead, you know, getting to that second level, moving people out the way, or if he, he's getting pulled and he's he's got to go – uh, horizontal, that's fine. Like he can move in space. And I know once again, he has an ACL injury. Maybe there's some better options out there at center. And there are some backups like uh, Christian Berry um, from Denver is another guy I'm kind of keeping an eye on. I think he's down here somewhere as well. But you have to get that center spot fixed, man. You have to. And I know, like I said, he, he just came off an injury. Is that the just flex seal that fixes the offensive line? Maybe not, but it is a big move in the right direction. Most of the pressure that Sam Howell was facing last year at a historic rate was coming from the interior, was coming from that center spot, was coming from that left guard spot. So even with his ACL, they have him as a 37th ranked prospect in uh, free agency. And I'm telling you, if you didn't have that injury, you would probably be top 10 with some big names. Um, Cause he was that good. Like it was really good last year. Even with the, after the injury, he finished as the number two center in the NFL. Um, so getting that fixed, it once again, the draft, you're probably going to have to get a guy in the second, if not. You, you hope uh, JPJ from Oregon's there, Zach Frazier, with some guys a little bit down, maybe third round, Cedric Von Prahn. Um, I'm trying to think of some other centers in the draft. But you're if, if you don't get one of free agency, you're going to have to take JPJ in the second early because he's not going to last until a third Zach Frazier's probably not. And that's a guy that had an injury as well, but he's doing good. He's his recovery is great. So maybe you just, you take a, a cheaper route on a Connor Williams, let him come back. Maybe if, if he's not ready, like fully at the beginning of the season, let Stromberg start. And then when Connor Williams is healthy, get him out there like ASAP, <laughs> like ASAP. Um, but if it's only $6 million, that's nothing. Like, please do that. And then next offseason, offer him a bigger contract. Like, if, if Stromberg's going to be, like, your stopgap center, that's fine. That's fine. And I, I do have high hopes for Stromberg. I really liked him. He was my third center coming out. Um, but we need we need a fix. And like I said, if you're not going to draft one, um, then you've got to swing on a guy like Connor Williams or uh, Christian Berry, which I forgot where he is. He might be on the next screen out of Denver. But like I said, I was only going to do five, but I'll mention him as well. Uh, there he is. Lloyd Christian Berry, the third, 10th ranked center in the league. They have him four years, 14, and some change a year. So, I mean, that's that's kind of hefty. He's not that old either, though. 26, freshly 26. Um, he had a good season, so maybe that's your backup plan. If, if you don't feel good about the medicals on Connor, you're like, eh, even though it's cheap, we don't know how it's going to check out. You have a backup in Lloyd uh, uh, Christian Berry, who, I mean, Denver should definitely want to get back. Uh, we don't know who's going to be quarterbacking in Denver, uh, but it doesn't sound like it's going to be Russ. Um, 
So maybe that's the other option. So got one more left. And this is someone that a lot of people have talked about. Um, and to no surprise, it's at a position that Washington is definitely hurting in. And that is Patrick Queen, the number 45th ranked free agent, according to PFF. So we have Jamin Davis. Jamin Davis has a lot going on in March as well. We don't know what that even looks like. Um, what can Dan Quinn do with a guy like Patrick Crane, who, who loves to get to the quarterback? He's gotten a lot better. His first few seasons were rough. And then Roquan Smith goes over to Baltimore, really lets him you know, play his game. And Patrick Queen really developed under, I don't want to say under Roquan, so we'll say next to Roquan Smith. Um, in that Baltimore defense with Mike McDonald, who obviously was killing it in Baltimore. Patrick Queen played a lot better than he did those first few seasons where he was a big-time liability. He was just running past plays. Um, but I, I think Patrick Queen has done enough to say, like, I feel safe about this guy. He's definitely playing his best ball right now. What does that even look like getting a Patrick Queen? Once again, in the draft, there's some guys I like. Second, third rounds, probably where you're going to find a, a linebacker if you don't go that linebacker route. Um, so it's just, but I, I think it's important to have an actual vet on this team at the linebacker spot. And I don't mean Cody Parton, and I don't mean David Mayo when I say veteran. <laughs> I mean an actual uh, playmaking linebacker. I'm not, like I said, you can see 2021 was rough, but the last two years have been really good for him. Still like 24 years old. That's crazy. Um, he's projected to have a four-year, uh, 18 and some change per year deal. Not bad. Um, they break it down. Queen's pass rushing prowess is not captured below, um, but it carries significant value in addition to a strong play against the run and in coverage over the past two seasons. It's 48 quarterback pressures and eight sacks over the past two seasons are both second among off-the-ball linebackers. Um like I said, adding Roquan Smith was huge. Uh, but they have a lot of people to pay in Baltimore. They've got some contracts they've got to figure out. I just don't see a way that Patrick Queen comes back. Um, I mean, like I said, they've got dudes in the middle uh, on the defensive line. Geno Stone, he's a free agent. I mean, they're going to have to get some pass rushing help. Um, I think. Trying to think who else they have. I mean, I don't see Odell coming back, but they've they've got some dudes on offense. They've got to pay to. They got a lot of some notable names in free agency. Um, so I could see a guy like Patrick Queen leaving because they do have Roquan Smith, and they can just um, they got somebody out of Clemson last year. I want to say too, I forgot who they drafted at linebacker. Saw a little bit of them this year, but they've got some guys behind Patrick Queen that I think that could elevate, um, or they could sign another free agent cheap or draft a guy. But I, I just don't see Patrick Queen going back to Baltimore, especially at this expense. You know, $72.5 million contract. Is that a lot for a linebacker? Maybe. But when you break it down to 18 per year, I mean, for, for a linebacker like that in a position that Washington's dying in, and I know people like linebacker's not that important. It's not like a corner position, blah, blah, blah. I don't know if I feel good about that contract. At the same time, like man, you see, you see how bad the linebacker play has been in Washington lately. I'm not hesitating on that contract. You have the money. You're gonna have a uh, a rookie quarterback on a really cheap cheap deal. You don't really have to make any other big payments right now. Like I said, maybe you you're probably gonna tag Cam Curl. By the way, I don't see a way Cam Curl gets a bag. He's probably gonna get tagged. And then you have, like I said, you might resign Kendall Fuller. But I really think free agency is going to focus on the defensive side of the ball. Like I said, I would love a Dalton Schultz, maybe throw a lineman in there. But you want to talk about corner, linebacker, edge rusher, that's where you're going to be investing the money in, in free agency, getting those impact players. And you talk about Adam Peters, talk about, like, oh, I want fast, physical guys. I want guys that can just run around, be around the ball, um, you know, I want these physical guys. I want people to hate playing us. And I love hearing that. And I just don't see a way he can go from Fred Warner, Greenlaw. Um, I like Aziz Alshai here, by the way, too. He's a free agent. He used to play for San Francisco last year. He played one year with the, the uh, Titans. To just not investing in that linebacker room. So I think Patrick Queen's a smart investment. Like I said, four years, 72 mil. Is that a lot? Yeah. But for a guy that young that you're expecting to play all four of those years, 
I think it's definitely worth it. The market resets all the time. You have the money. 18 mil out of the 73 that you have, and you don't have to pay a quarterback? You might as well do it now. Invest in winning right now. Um, and I also had people ask me, like, do you see a, a chance that Kirk Cousins comes here? No, not enough 30 million a year. <laughs> no. Um, I, I think we go rookie quarterback at two and we just build the rest of the team around whoever it is, whoever we get, or we trade up to one, whatever. I don't care. In free agency, you got to spend money on guys that can make an impact right away. And I think Patrick Quinn could be one of those guys. I would love to see what Dan Quinn can do rushing the quarterback with Patrick Queen as good as he is. And it's not going to be all the time, but he's going to mix some things in there. You're going to see some Quan Martin plays. You're going to see some Patrick Queen plays. Um, like I said, Jamin Davis, I think he's going to get after the quarterback a lot more this season. I think it, it gives you the flexibility to do a lot of stuff. Imagine a brace huff on the edge. Adding a Patrick Queen. Sneed, I mean, that's a good defense if you ask me. So, Sign me up. And like I said, guys, these aren't all of the targets that I think Washington would be looking at. Um, but I think these are some very realistic ones to keep an eye on. Like I said, I'm going to be talking about some more in the next few weeks. We have one month until free agency starts, like right at almost exactly a month. I think the legal tampering period is like two days before or something like that. So I'm sure you'll hear some leaks and stuff like that. So we're a little less than a month away. But it's going to go by fast. So I appreciate y'all tuning in. Um, let me know your thoughts as always. Drop it. Um, in the comments, appreciate y'all stopping by. Um, I had someone ask me, who is my number one pros OL prospect in free agency? <sighs> Man, honestly, that's tough. I think, honestly, I, I think that Connor Williams, if he didn't get hurt, would have been a home run guy. Um, I think that would have been like the dude to go after. Outside of that, there's a couple of tackles mixed in there. But in my opinion, I still think um, Connor Williams would be the guy. And if not, your backup's Lloyd uh, Cushenberry. Um, Gibby says, agree with the O-line. Um, if we trade back, we can get multiple uh, picks this year. The roster, 1-53 to 53 is weak. See, that's another thing. I'm not fond of trading back at the number two spot because if you don't have a quarterback, nothing else matters in my opinion. Nothing matters. Um, but yes, we do need a fixed offensive line. So if you're throwing some money at it, like I said, Connor Williams, 6 million for one year, easy. Um, if he's not ready by week one, maybe you plug in Stromberg for a little bit, but as long as it's not Nick Gates, it's not Tyler Larson. Like it's a guy that has some upside to him. I think how I think Stromberg has some upside to him. Once again, we got better coaching staff. Uh, we just hired somebody else, by the way. Um, assistant coach, defensive line, Daryl Tapp is coming over. Big news. So, D-line, getting a guy like Bryce Huff once again. This is another thing I'm going to end, end the stream with that y'all need to remember. And you're already seeing it with the coaching staff. You're seeing guys like Anthony Lynn come over here, you know, former head coaches, come over here and, and take lesser roles. People want to come here. People are going to want to come to Washington to play under Dan Quinn, to play under Cliff Kingsbury, to play under these uh, position coaches, these coordinators. Players are going to want to come play in Washington, which is di which is different. It's not the William Jacksons. It's not the Albert Hainsworth. It's not the Cody Bartons. You're going to hear big names and like, oh, okay, that's that's big. Like, it would not surprise me at all if LeJarrius Sneed said, yeah, I'm going to go to Washington. I'm going to get a bag. I'm going to play with a defensive coordinator that has a proven track record making corners look really good. I've got my rings in Kansas City. Let me go get a bag from Washington and ball out under Dan Quinn and Joe Wood Jr. That would not surprise me at all. Same with Patrick Queen. Patrick Queen's like, hey, that guy's good. He knows defense. Sign me up. So just don't be surprised when Washington is very active in free agency, but then also when players actually decide to come here because coaches are doing it right now. I'm telling you guys, it is completely different. I know no one's played a game yet. It's still super early. We don't know what to expect. Everything looks good on paper right now, but heck, that's a start. So appreciate y'all stopping by. Uh, be sure if you just came in late, rewatch from the beginning to go over the prospects that I saw. And as always, always upload these to my YouTube channel as well. Like I said, I'm Josh Taylor, and I will be back soon for another Bleacher Report stream.
Catch y'all next time.